recording to the cloud. All right, so it is my honor to introduce our speaker tonight, Stephanie Mohan. She is a professional photographer and has done many of our photographs for uh, our New of Marin website. She's giving a talk tonight called Headshot 101, how to take a photo that flatters. Would you rather visit the dentist than have your headshot taken by a photographer? Does your face suddenly become stiff and awkward when you're in front of the camera? Or maybe you just want a few tips and tricks before you feel ready to take on that big photo session. Portrait photographer, photojournalist, and Fairfax artist in residence, Stephanie Mohan, will share with us some ideas on how to take the anxiety out of sitting in front of a camera while getting great results. In this informative talk, Stephanie will share with us studio versus natural light, tricks to use in front of the camera, how Photoshop can make or break a photo, and a musical slideshow. Stephanie, she's been a, a professional photographer since 1996 and has had a portrait studio located in Fairfax for the last 20 years. With a degree in photojournalism, Stephanie helps bring her art to her town as artist in residence and loves shooting rallies and protests. She is also a photographer with Pro Bono Photo. Say that uh, three mm -hmm. times quickly. <laughs> An organization which provides photography for nonprofit organizations with a mission of community service, progressive political action, or environmental advocacy. In addition to loving her job, Stephanie is a mom and wife and has way too many pets. Mm -hmm. And now I am going to make her not only the speaker, but the host. <laughs> there you go, Stephanie, take it away. Okay. Oh. So thanks, Andrea. And I have to move all your faces over so I can read here. So thank you, and it, so it was in my late, I, it, forgive me, I have to turn this off. I don't know how to do this here. Quit, okay. So it was in my late 20s when I realized it was time for me to get my act together and figure out what I want to be when I grow up. And I'd been going to college for several years and I had no direction. I had been, uh, I remember being on a museum field trip in high school and standing in front of a six foot high image shot by Richard Avedon. And I remember thinking, this is what I want to do with my life. I want to be a photographer. So with that memory, I finished up my degree at San Francisco State with a BA in photojournalism. And I graduated and immediately applied for my rightful job at Rolling Stone Magazine. And I sent in my slides and I awaited my acceptance only to be told they never received them. So I sent in a second set of slides and a month later I received not one but two rejection letters. So after graduating, I took a $7 an hour job at the camera company and it was a tiny little photo lab that did headshots in the back room. And it was a terrible paying job, but I met my new mentor, Dennis, and he was an old time a uh, headshot photographer who taught me uh, how to take a traditional headshot and I took the best of what he taught me and came up with my own personal style. So you might be wondering what makes a good headshot and many people think you need to be a model but I'm here to tell you that's not what it takes. It takes to, to have a good headshot you just have to portray a feeling that you are strong, authentic, friendly and approachable. And I've enlisted my friend Meta here. Let's move that there. I've enlisted Meta to help me demonstrate how to take a good headshot. So one of the first things I ask my client is, do you want natural light or studio? And this, this image on the right was shot in the studio. And the thing that's so great about studio photography is you can control everything. You can control the time of day that you shoot. You can control the lighting. I can add shadows. I, I control everything. And most importantly, you can see the background is very plain and non-distracting. And that's really important to give a very professional look. And usually studio is great for LinkedIn and other social media 
profile shots. Um, if you do decide to do natural light, there's things that you have to be very aware of. For example, um, the lighting. You can see how these the bright light is uh, creating this white this white mask on her face. It also help, makes you squint and creates what I call raccoon eyes, these little circles that go around your eyes. Um, but the thing about natural light is it's also very flattering and the background is very interesting. You can also get a little more artistic when you are outside. And here you can see um, that the background kind of tells a story and it can offer an energy that you don't get sometimes. But um, I've had to cancel many shoots. I can tell you Susan and uh, Susanna both have had me show up and the wind was so bad we had to cancel. So the next thing that's really important is your eye level with the camera. So the shot on the far left, I shot very low and what it does is it really brings a lot of attention to her neck and her nostrils. So you really, the only people that can really pull off this low, low angle are people who are very, very thin. On the right, we have an image. I was standing on a ladder. Uh, Meta asked me to kind of hide some of the stuff on her neck. So we shot from a higher angle. But my favorite angle is just straight ahead eye level. So um, I feel like it looks more natural, a little bit more um, off, like, like I'm, I'm sitting in the room with her. So you have to kind of decide what, what you're trying to do with your photo. Um, here's Meta. One of the things people do, the first thing they do when they get on my backdrop is they pull their chin in. And everybody has a double chin when they do that. So here we are, we're about to do uh, some shots. And I had Meta pull her chin out like that. And what that does is it tightens up all the muscles in her neck and gives her a beautiful jawline. So you have to just pull your chin out and parallel to the ground. Here is Meta with um, a pale pink shirt. And I wanna talk about the clothing. I tend to like more contrast and I feel like she's very pale and this pink doesn't give any contrast. I mean, she looks good in everything, I think, but, but I think a darker color makes her look a little more professional and gives her a little more contrast. Here we have no contrast whatsoever and spaghetti straps. And I think both of these are not good look for her. If you have a chest, you do not want to wear spaghetti straps. And if you were to crop below her neck, it would almost look like she's naked. So I don't recommend that unless you're small chested. She told me she wanted a photo that didn't, that stood out. And it's unusual to wear a t-shirt in a headshot, but I feel like this really worked. And the you'll notice that her cheeks have more red tone to them, to them that, than that beige top did. Um, it brought out the red in her cheeks and the dark coat I felt gave a good contrast. So that's very important. Next, I wanna tell you about your expression. And here's Meta looking very serious, like a Vogue model. But sometimes when you're too serious, I feel like you can look bored or older or just not as interested. And the shot on the right, I feel she looks very vibrant and happy to be there. So I, I do recommend smiling, but if you want to do a more serious shot, I'm gonna um, show you this image. So here she is very serious. And all you have to do if you don't wanna smile in your shot is just lift your lips. It's not a full on smile, but it, it is, it just brings your face up and I think it looks better. Get rid of this slide here. Another way to get a good expression is to play a little bit and Meta has kids. So I told her to pretend you were goofing around for your kids and we did a series and it kind of warmed her up. It was a great exercise, but it led us to this shot where I feel like she looks very engaged and 
very, uh, I, I think she looks beautiful in this photo and this is somebody I would want to work with. My last tip is a big one and that is Photoshop. And I do see a lot of overuse of Photoshop. I'm gonna blow up her face a little. So this is unretouched. And here I over retouched her face. We overly whitened her eyes, which I see a lot. Uh, I took every, every wrinkle out by her nose and under her eyes. And I just feel like it's too much. So what I recommend is if your photographer does do a lot of retouching like this, I recommend ditching about 70% of it. And you can, uh, let's see, that's about 35% right there. And I put back the lines, some of the lines, but I took the edge off is what I like to say. You can see the lines by her mouth and her nose that make her look more natural. But it just, like I said, it just took the edge off. And here's the before, and that's the after. Now the fun part. <laughs> I've made a slideshow that I want to show you, and I'm going to look at my notes here. Uh, I have a slideshow of my portfolio, and while these aren't all headshots, you can see what I've done with different examples of body placement, what I've done with cropping, and what I've done with facial expression and background. So you may need to adjust, let's see, let's get this here. You might need to adjust the volume. I have it set at about 50%. And there you go. Thanks. <laughs> 
So beautiful. Wow. wow. That's beautiful. Yeah. Mm. Uh, uh, Stephanie, go ahead and take it out of screen share mode since you're the host right now. Cool. All right. Yes, we do have time for some questions. Uh, so if you have a question, I guess because we're a pretty small group, uh, you can just chime in. If you're having a hard time, just feel free to raise your hand and I'll call you out. Who wants to? Any, any questions? Uh, yes, Barbara Squires, go for it. So I don't have a question. I just want everybody to know that um, I did my headshot with Stephanie and it was one of the best experiences I've ever had because it was fun. <laughs> and she knew exactly what to do with me. It was just amazing. And at the very last minute, she said, Barbara, why don't you put on your red jacket? Because I had just had on a, a blue top to match my blue eyes. But I put on the red jacket and bang, that was it. And she knew, she just knows exactly what's best for you. So I, I just cannot recommend her more highly. And I just thought the whole presentation was very moving. It, it just really struck me. And the music was just perfect. So Stephanie, congrats to you. You're, you're just marvelous. <laughs> Thanks, Barbara. Any questions? <laughs> Go for it, Nan, and then Michelle. Stephanie, mind blowing, and I'm also teary. Um, do you do weddings? No. <laughs> if you knew how stressed I was to prepare for this, but the weddings are so hard. <laughs> Anybody like you that you know that does weddings? Yes. Okay, we'll talk. Okay. <laughs> Great, and then Michelle, go for it. You're muted. You want. Hang on. Um, um, yeah, go for it. Can you hear me? Yes. Um, sorry, I've lost my Zoom screen somehow. I don't oh. know what happened. Um, so I don't have my screen in front of me, but Stephanie, so, um, but I was able to watch in, in the little window. <laughs> Um, so did you actually bring, bring a goat and a pig into your studio? Yes. I love yes, that. I and you know, the thing about goats is when they're nervous, um, <laughs> they yeah. go, and so we had to, we had to walk him in with a bucket under his tush <laughs> <laughs> the whole time. And then we, they're, they, they're, they're pretty neat little round poos though, right? They are, but yeah, I didn't want them on the floor. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyway, it was just phenomenal, and it was so great to just see the you know the range that you do. And um, but I I love the children and the animals and mm. the family is just beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Any other questions? Yes, Laurie, go for it. Um, I have a question. Um, my administrative secretary bought me this lamp with all these different options on it to use for zoom calls and we have no idea what to really do with it but for these kind of zoom calls do you have suggestions on because i could really see the contrast between the natural lighting and the studio lighting um and i know it's different in every situation but do you have any hints for that scenario i i'm assuming you have a round light 
yeah, it was rounded. It had a yellow and a blue. And, and then the, I'm at the Civic Center now and the lighting is really weird, but um, it just struck me how the difference between when you showed the contrast that was so informative. So thank you. Yeah, the, the, you know, those, those fluorescent bulbs, I'm, I'm not, I, I'm kind of old school, but I do have some and I've been learning a lot about them. And so whatever shape that light has is the light, what it's going to make in your eyes. Right. I tend to like side light. Um, my light's not so great right here, but I like shadow and women don't tend to like shadow um, mm -hmm. because it shows all kinds of details in your skin. Mm -hmm. So um, if you put your, your little light right in front of you, it should take every sign of life out of your face. <laughs> <laughs> like that? <laughs> Where? <laughs> Me. I, I just... <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> like <laughs> right there. <beautiful. laughs> I pick B. <laughs> exactly. Any other questions? Let's see. Uh, looks like Kathleen and then Susanna. So Stephanie, I I concur with what everyone said. It beautiful, beautiful, and moving work, moving work. So thank you. Um, I am kind of going through this transition of deciding that I'm just going to let my naturalness kind of shine through. So I've, since my last headshot, which I'm just going to show you like the difference between who I am and who I am right now. Um, I've, you know, my hair's a lot shorter. I'm letting, you know, my natural uh, gray come out and I'm very excited about that, but it's going to be like a year process. Um, so, but I want to start like revealing to the world like who my current person, you know, who my current persona is versus something from seven years ago. So do you have um, any tips for other women that are going through or men, I guess as well, but any tips for women that are going through this? Cause I really even feel like my wardrobe and my makeup, everything is just like, kind of like not congruent right now. So how are you handling that? Um, or are you seeing clients that are, are doing that same kind of thing? Um, well, I know we have two, uh, hair people here today, but <laughs> I know there's a way to kind of like highlight it in, but I don't think I would do a headshot with just roots, honestly. Oh, it, it's not just roots. I'm actually already highlighting it in, but over the, over the course of the year, my hair will be pretty great because I'm doing it in progressions versus doing the skunk patch. I'm not doing that, um, right. but I'm already weaving in, and you might not see it on Zoom, but I'm already weaving in some highlights through it, and I'll just keep progressively doing that yeah. as the year goes by. Yeah, you know, I, I, I have never been asked that. Um, I have tried to cover up roots and- No, I don't want to cover it up. That's the exact oh, opposite. That's well, the exact saw, opposite of what I want to do. You saw Michelle in that, um, Michelle um, Moquin in my slideshow and she has that amazing gray hair. And um, I know that a lot of women are doing it right now. And so- Yeah, it was perfect timing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, well, we'll, we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. And uh, Susanna, go ahead. Um, you know, Kathleen, you, what you might want to consider is doing an outdoor shot with Stephanie, which is what I did a couple months ago. Um, it really, it brings your vitality out and it really doesn't matter what you look like because it's, it's you and nature. It's you in your element and the dynamic energy that's created. So maybe that will help. Um, and Stephanie, I didn't know you were going to have my kids in your video, my two, my two pups. And I can't tell you, they're both gone. And if, if you have pets that you love, um, you just really want to, um, memorialize them. And Stephanie really does a great job at doing that. You always have great dogs. <laughs> Delilah was barking during your presentation while you were talking. <laughs> she was excited to hear from you. <laughs> awesome. Stephanie has got such talent with pets. It's amazing. Yeah. Uh, any other? Susan Deluxe. Yes, go for it. And then Susan Fox. Oh. I just wanted to say, Stephanie, that was, that was really beautiful. Uh, you captured the essence. You could just see people's souls shining through their eyes. 
and I've been resistant for reasons I've shared with you over the last couple of years to have you take my headshot um, because melanoma nose issues and such. But my question is, what do you do with, I mean, I love this mask thing, you know, we're all, everyone's politicized wearing a mask. But for an older woman, I think I may never not take it off. <laughs> you don't see the sagging, you know, the collapsing lower face thing. But for an older woman, uh, moi, what would you suggest? How would you shoot an, an older broad like me? <laughs> um, couple things. One thing I would tell you, I think I even have this on my website listed. If you don't like your arms, for example, don't wear a tank top. Or I don't love this area. I would probably wear maybe a high neck tank top, you know, something, you know, something like that covering here, this whole area. And um, a lot of, like I had said earlier, there's um, one woman has uh, the higher ankle can kind of hide some of that stuff on your neck if you don't like that part. You know, there's just little tricks to hide. But I also think that Susanna, I'm glad she brought that up. I do think that people who are very self-conscious tend to not like the close-up studio because it shows everything. It, you know, you're, it's, it's, you can just see the face very closely. Whereas outside, there's so much texture and there's so much to look at that it kind of softens everything. So I'm glad Susanna brought that up. Uh, uh, thank you. That that's a good comment. I just ordered Stephen Colbert, you know, his campaign "Be Your Own President" mask. So maybe I'll have you <laughs> take me with that on. <laughs> Great idea. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> and uh, Susan Fox, go for it. So thank you. My mine is less of a question than comments. I've I've had the the good fortune of Stephanie doing headshots for me. I think I've had about four sets in the last maybe 10 years. And obviously 10 years between 50 and 60 plus, a lot of shit goes on. But she's managed to always convey my essence, which I think she's done, we saw that in her, in her video display. So it really matters less, you know, how many added wrinkles are here, how many added chins are here. You know, she'll do her work and she's done it with me, like, put your neck forward. And I'm so grateful for that. But really what I find at the end of a shoot is that the photos that I that I go, oh my God, there I am, are the ones that are here. And she and she has an, a miraculous ability to pull out here. And I think that's what a photo actually ultimately is, like the spirit coming out through whatever this skin suit looks like at whatever point in time. So I thank you for that, Stephanie. Uh, awesome, and Wendy Lyons, go ahead. Oh, I, I just wanna thank you for the beautiful photos we have on our walls, that thanks to Stephanie and my family, portraits are Fun. really a treasure. You're, you're amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Fantastic. All right. Great. Thank you, uh, Stephanie. That was lovely. I'm going to stop the vi uh, stop recording. Okay. Uh, I have to request permission from the meeting host. Hang on. I'm going to I'm going to take over hosting again. How about that? <laughs> Let's see. Which which thing do I do it on? It's the three dots somewhere. Uh, Reclaim host. Yes. Okay. And now end recording. Okay. So um, hopefully all of you who are asking questions uh, were okay with being part of the recording. And I think we can actually crop it anyway. So, okay. <laughs>